Welcome. Good Friday. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Uh, this is Vince. Welcome to Match Day. We got Ian in the middle there, and we got uh, our special guest today is uh, Stacy Wilson. Uh, for those that uh, know soccer, um, Stacy is well known as far as uh, her, her uh, experience at University of North Carolina. She was a national champion. She was also a player on our women's national team, won a gold medal. Um, and she also played professionally with the Carolina Courage. She is now in Florida with, I believe, the Hoagland, Hoagland, Hoag Sound. Oh, I can't hear you, Stace. Uh-oh. She's going to turn her mic on eventually. Hoag Sound Soccer Club. And uh, she was recently the uh, coach of the year, coaching a boys' high school team uh, in, in the state of Florida. So welcome, Stacy. I hope you can hear us and hope we can hear you. So welcome and thank you for your time. Can't hear you. Uh, boss. Yeah. So yeah. we'll feel, we'll feel that Stacy, can you hear us? Stacy. It's great that we were chatting off air with Stacy beautifully from North yeah. Carolina, uh, from Florida. And as soon as we go on air, no sound from Stacy. Should we reboot the room? Stacy is adjusting her computer settings, which were working perfectly pre starting the room and now. <laughs> we lost someone already. Yeah. But uh, that's all right. All right. So, anyway, so among, among Stacy's highlights are she was a coach of the year in boys' high school coaching in uh, Florida this year, and she likened it to Lord of the Flies. So, um, not Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Flies. So, she's sharing a screen, which is absolutely fantastic, but we can't hear her. Yeah, don't end the event there. Hit no. There you go. Um, if that is Stacy's screen, she has everything set up except for her, maybe her computer uh, yep. settings. They're not set for audio because she's got the screen turned on. So should we reset? Yeah, I think we've got we've got over 30 people on the call. So if, if those of you that are on, please be patient. We're going to come out of the room and try to get Stacy back on. Vince, do you want to you want to go out and reboot it? Yeah, it's just the panic button, right? Uh, that's just to dump people. So oh, just that's for profanity and inappropriate comments, I think. I'm just going to reboot it. Okay. I'm back on. As am I. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Oh, we're good. All right, Stacy, we can hear you. And apologize to everybody on the line and appreciate your patience. So uh, without further delay, Stacy, if you don't mind, Stacy's going to talk to us uh, as far as uh, kind of a self-coach training program that she's designed for her club that uh, we, we thought all of you would benefit from. So Again, thank you, Stacy, and sorry about the technical difficulties. So we'll go and get started. Uh, I'll go ahead and start the presentation. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so basically right now we're all in a position, most coaches, um, you know, as of weeks ago, where we're having to uh, send programs home, everybody, for one reason or another. Either you want your kids to continue to improve um, or – some people just want to stay in touch. It's the end of the season. You don't want to end so abruptly. Um, so for one reason or another, everybody's trying to get players to work out and to um, take advantage of the time. So um, in general, when coming up with a program, you know, I know back in the day, uh, 
getting people to train in the off season, uh, it was the only choice. Um, with women's soccer, there really wasn't like pro teams and, and not even club teams and, and semi-pro teams like there are now. So training on your own was pretty much the only way there was. Um, I remember Anson giving us programs, and when he gave us a program, one, he said, you know, Michelle Akers, she did this and became the fastest player on the team. So, you know, I totally believed it was easy to get people to believe in training back then. So here he wasn't a problem. And, and even back then, you know, uh, to some degree, uh, you know, we were older, so we could get to a track, we could get different places. So implementing wasn't too much of an issue either. But right now, that's basically what we have is we have a lot of coaches who are trying to get their players to train at home. And, you know, hopefully if they have them understanding that the um, proper work, you know, most of your work is done in the off season and then you play in the in season and, and kind of, but you're getting your body right. That stuff is typically done in the off season. Yeah. So I happened to, and I wrote this one on here, um, is uh, uh, read up, uh, listen to a podcast a little while ago, and it talked about building mm -hmm. habits and and really working out over the summer and and doing it continuously. It's the same type of thing. And mm -hmm. the biggest takeaway was that um, you know people uh, they they don't if they want to do something they they don't do it just because of willpower. It's really a lot of things that you do in your life to try to create it and make it a habit, kind of removing the barriers to to um to you being able to accomplish your goal or maybe if it's a habit you're trying to break you know putting up more barriers right. but so we're going to basically be trying to remove barriers for our players and helping them to um get the right program so no matter what you know who i'm working with uh these are the things that i tend to try to look at um okay. yeah. and take into consideration and so right now, since uh, we are in this unique environment, um, I'm making the assumption here, uh, and, and, and yes, some people with, with uh, the way things are right now, there are some people that do have a ton of equipment, ton of space, et cetera. But you know, I, I would like to, I think that those people will be able to adapt the program to their needs, and I need to make sure that the program is catered to people that have little to no equipment, little to no space. Um, you know, uh, some, uh, they don't have access to grass, or hopefully they maybe have a little bit of pavement or, or something, but who knows, maybe the friction on that, you know, it's not something they can change direction. You have to think about um, the things that people might have to deal with. Uh, the limited technology. I know a lot of people are super into watching YouTube videos, etc. But, you know, if uh, we have some kids that aren't able to participate in the school online yet because they're still getting cable, you know, installed. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because Comcast, they say they're giving it away for free right now. So um, uh, with that, you know, families are pretty stressed. So I'm not going to assume that parents are going to have a ton of time to, to be going over the program and micromanaging. But I do want to engage the parents a bit. But like I said, it's really got to be user friendly to the youth um, and the parents. Um, and right now, it's it's going to be considering that motivation levels. You know, they're on their own. They can't go and get with a friend. It's easy to say the skill practices, 1v1 and 2v2, that stuff can get to be fun. But they don't even have that choice anymore. You know, so, so how do we get them, you know, motivated? Mm -hmm. And then with soccer, uh, the last thing, you know, I'm always all about trying to do things for injury prevention, um, speed, agility, quickness, and individual comfort on the ball. Um, and I think that that's where, you know, the injury prevention, that's, that's, that's this type of strength and conditioning that needs to be done in the offseason. So many people, I think, soccer coaches are turned off to the, that aspect, the strength part, because they look at they only see people that use principles of bodybuilding and not principles of soccer. So, right. but actually if, if injury prevention and the type of strength, strength training that you're doing is really things that kind of um, reinforce neuromuscular efficiency, right? We're trying to do what we call kind of proprioception rich environments, mm -hmm. things like balance, things that help you figure out 
um, proprioception is basically your body's ability to to recognize its position in space, recognize the speed at which your limb is moving, et cetera, mm -hmm. and make little adjustments. So that not only ends up, you know, having your joints in alignment where you're reducing injuries, but it's also ends up, you know, that's that fine little motor control that improves your touch. So the type of strength strength training that you're doing uh, and, and speed agility uh, quickness training that you're doing are, are things that not only improve your performance, but they um, are that, that it's injury prevention and that preventing injury, you know, so many people get their career slowed down just because they have to keep recovering from an injury and they don't get to excel, you know. So uh, with that, just so you know, there, there's different things that you can address in your um, strength training and your off-season training, some of it with a ball, some of it without. But when you're looking at what we call integrative neuromuscular training, which is basically, you know, that's more, that's not bodybuilding. That's not just worried about the hypertrophy and how, you know, strong I can get, but it's more, more to it there. And a big place where coaches can um you know soccer where we can right now get is a uh, coordination you know coordination um you know our, a lot of our kids uh that's what the ball tricks and things are um but a lot of times the kids some of these youtube videos that i'm seeing these move movements are so they're very complex yes and if i <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no if, you're good. Yeah. If, if i don't have like some basic rhythm some uh right left ability etc th th then these skills are going to be more difficult for me to execute for me to kind of break down and master so you know elements of coordination we can be looking to train things like agility ladders you know running through hurdles etc a skips that sense of rhythm a skips if soccer player more soccer players knew how to do that they would be uh, that we would have softer receiving touches um, so, you know, that's just to remind people that, you know, that, that six to nine years old, that's where we can start to do these types of things. Um, and that's where they would have the benefit. Um, and the reason why you're going to have older age groups that really still do need the training is because we're not getting it at these younger times. Right now I work with, and I'm doing at home programs for 10 to 12 year olds. So hopefully, um, you know, by the time they get to be older, we're not, they're not going to, we're not going to be doing the same basic agility ladder or things like that. And this is just, you know, just to give you a reminder of the, I guess the continuum um, that there is when you're training, you know, we, we want to start basic physical literacy, fundamental movements, and then we start building off of that with light plyometrics, strength, um, complementary training. So our pro summer program here really needs to, like we said, I want to address those things that we just said, and that gives you a lot that you can address. There's so many different ways that you can get into fitness and have fun with it, you know? So, so now that we see there's a lot we can do, that's not just a soccer ball, things that do involve, um, don't require space, right? So the overall programming goal is that we want to be flexible, uh, flexible structure so that no matter where they're at, you know, what they're dealing with, they can uh, carry it out. Um, have it address the development needs, the things that we just talked about. And also have little things incorporated with the program that will help them make it a habit. You know, it's not so so okay. painful that it's just it requires willpower all the time. Like, <laughs> okay. so Like me getting on my treadmill every morning. Yeah, yeah, like, right, if you have to do that every morning at five o'clock, you know, it's, it's, I don't think you're gonna, I, I don't think you're gonna stick to that program. No. Right. Um, so, uh, like I said, uh, one of the big things that I'm, that I've incorporated in my program, like you said, easy to understand format, I thought about making it totally freestyle, but I decided, no, there needs to be a bit of a schedule, you don't want to have like, paralysis by analysis, too many options, then it's, you know, this is what you should do, a recommended schedule, but there's flexibility from within it. So I might tell them I want you to do a cardio workout or whatever, but there's going to be choices. Um, the workouts, um, I'm going to give them some that have 
a little bit more um, to it. You know, might have some cones, this, that set up, but some of them are super easy to do. All you need is, uh, you know, a wall. <laughs> Um, right, right. If you don't, so and then and then the accountability part, you know, you can't just leave it out there and expect them to do it. Um, right. It's so like I said, easy to understand. This is a little piece from what I gave our team, and you can see uh, that's weeks one through three. There started out pretty simple, you know, just one different workout a day. We do have a match day on Saturdays where we try to. Um, you know, I think this one we had them watch a match and for 10 minutes of it count how many across the body passes they found and, oh, and yeah. ask those type of questions. Um, so, so this is the schedule that they're given. There's a slight increase. You know, we didn't start out with 10 workouts, something that's doable. You know, you want to give them, um, again, if it's, if it's too hard at, at the beginning, then they're going to get turned off. Right. We want to help them make this kind of a, a lifestyle, a habit. So doable bites. Um, you can see. Uh, let's go. Actually, let's see. Um, so this is where. So that's what the schedule that they were given. And then I gave them uh, five different packets within the skill packet. There were 11 skill workouts because, you know, there's so many different things you can do. Uh, I did show them the wall kicking routine with, um, is it James on Twitter, who who's, has that great uh, website, everybody doing that. I have a couple of illustrated dribbling workouts so that they can look at that. And I actually stole that from another coach. It was just something I said, this is quality, this is great. I'm using it, this is perfect. Um, and then found some YouTube links that I thought were not too complicated, showed nice basic progressions and things that I've not done with them in practice that I think they'll have fun with. Um, the cardio as well, there's like a billion different options that I gave them because like I said, if it's just, you got to get on your treadmill at five in the morning, you're not going to do that. So I gave them like four different aerobic options. Look, if you want to do an interval, you know, kind of told them the, you know, the, you know, sprint hard for 30 seconds, then go easy for a minute and a half. Then another option was, you know, a two minute interval with a three minute. And then with that gave them. Uh, also gave them uh, some some more, like I said, some anaerobic ones. These are ones that, right. you know, soccer's not an aerobic sport. There's sprint, walk, this, that. So gave them some anaerobic fitness options, ones that I made sure were age appropriate. I've seen a ton of people take old Carolina programs and just, you know, <laughs> pass them on. Like, I've seen this before 20 yep. years ago. Yep. Wow, exactly. exact same time and everything. Yep. Yep. So some, some of the fitness tests I did take because they're, they're great, you know, a 10 right. yard, 10 yards out and back, but I adjusted the times and the reps so that it's reasonable to, to the, to the age that I'm working with. And then said, you know, maybe start with three, uh, and, you know, work your way up to six. Um, so now the, the, we gave them some, uh, speed, agility, quickness and strength options. And those are where I think a lot of coaches are, are a little bit wary. Some are worried about liability, or I guess they don't know whether or not what they're going to give is, is safe. Um, but there's plenty of safe stuff out there. I think I saw your presentation with the Red Bulls guy the other day, and, yep. he, and I, looked, I looked at their website, and their um, strength exercises that they give are, are great. And in fact, the only thing I would say is they need to give more of them and, ah. and, and give the amount that they want to do because it just tells, shows it. But so the point is, is that there's isometrics, things like planks, our kids can't do. These yeah. type of things, if we have better, those are the little minute things that will help us get better body control. Um, Planks right now is what I started them with. Um, lunge isometrics, uh, wall sit, you know, that that's great. I know um, that's, that's stuff that I did when I was younger, things like that. Uh, I know a lot of kids don't have a, a pull-up bar, but oh my gosh, if kids could do right now some flexed arm hangs or some pull-ups or something, that is the type of stuff that I've been preaching for years is gonna, what's gonna help our, uh, heading issues get better. So these type of upper body strength, you know, I saw a, a article the other way and it was like, 
oh, we did a neck, neck strengthening routine and it didn't change things. And I was like, those aren't the neck muscles. Like you just did these, like you need to, you know, when I do bigger, anyways, I could go off on a whole nother heading thing. But like I said, that upper body, shoulder, neck strength complex. This is a time where if you can get that better, we're not yeah. going to have all of these injuries like that. Right, right. So, um, and then some, I, so we gave a, a isometrics. We're going to build off of that. That's right now everything is two foot, um, you know, uh, body weight movement, making sure we're doing the right technique of squats, lunges, push-ups, sit-ups. Really key, the hip knee calf program. I had a lot of kids that had calf injuries already at age U10, wow. 11. That's like our most common thing. So I did include that and I think the parents appreciate it. Um, so can I pause you there? So what do you- Yeah, 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 sorry. Hmm? Why, why do you think that is, um, or your thoughts as to, because you're right. I mean, at 10, 11, I'm like, why are they having calf injuries? Um, you know. Why do I think that is? Yeah. I think, I, I think to some degree it's, uh, you know, I try to stretch, maybe to some degree stretching. Okay. I think it's the footwear that they're wearing. Um, uh, yeah, at that younger age, they don't really pay attention as much. I can look at the look at their feet sometimes or untied shoes and uh, my feet hurt looking at them. Uh, I do have some kids that I think are, they don't realize it. That's why I try to really encourage the right and left. Um, one kid is just super, super right dominant, and it, it's predictable the way that his injury goes on it on his uh, opposite side. Um, yeah, it's it's so I, I try to um, incorporate things within my programs, but I only have them for two days a week. So um, un unfortunately, when they're at school or this or that, they're not doing little things, stretching down, warming up. So with that, though, I also included the stretch program. So two different, we have a, a stretch day where it's two different um, dynamic warm-ups, dynamic flexibility, and um, yeah, two different dynamic flexibility. And then I started, I gave them some yoga poses for runners and then some yoga poses for soccer players. So it really takes them through um the yoga poses for soccer players takes them through like about five key stretches that again they know some of them from season i'm trying to make sure that you know they know every practice oh you should be doing a lunge or a certain type of glute stretch but this right here is basically yeah. they're get, having a full workout that they get credit for for stretching very good all the workouts are pretty easy to do. Like I said, the only thing to really point out is that with the running, I've seen a lot of people give programs that have a hundred yard sprints. And right now, all of the running that I gave really only requires about 10 to 25 yards max. Okay. All right. So here's an example of one of the running programs. Um, this one right here requires anywhere 30 yards max. But really, if you have just uh, 5, 10, or 15. So you can see um, this is one that, well, back in the day when I played, I thought this was kind of easy, so to speak. But that's perfect. You know, I don't like well, you said, made a lot of You made a lot of things look easy, <laughs> so, by the way, when you played. So. Like, oh, you need easy options, so to speak. Every every work I say, not every workout has to be a rock em sock em workout. It's the... Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, it's the maintenance, it's doing it regularly that, that does it. So this is one right here that I think will have the kids feeling good and accomplished. They can pick what level, you know, 60 yards. If you go out and back just to the 30, that's yeah. pretty easy. But if you add more turns, so it, it, again, this, what I call that slanty line principle where they yeah. can take the challenge of where they're at, you know. Here's an example I told you that I found a, I, I included one yoga stretch sequence for runners in it. So these were some of the things and we, they already know about five of those stretches. We do thread the needle, the half split, half pigeon, um, low lunge. We've done low lunge, co-brand. Yeah. So yes. this is, these are things that are really great for, for them and not too difficult. 
Now the flexibility of the routine, like I said, if we looked back, uh, it did have where it was recommended days. Yeah. But those recommended days, they can go ahead and do something different. In fact, two of the speed, agility, quickness workouts that I put in there actually can count as skill workouts, you know, and I let them know that they can switch it. And if it's a skill day, they can do that workout. It can go either way um, as well. It was very clear that, hey, maybe it was um, speed, agility, quickness, and they couldn't get outside at all. So they can just put something. It really is something is better than nothing. If right. we can get them moving right now, I know. I was talking to um, my assistant coach yesterday, and he's saying how he's doing really well right now. He's working out. People are even noticing that, um, you know, and it, and he thinks that's the key. Like, he's thriving because he's working out. Right. So, really, if we can just encourage them and get them working out, um, yeah, you know. Yes. Or, so, now here's, here's the part where we get into the interactive you know we've told them what to do now how do we monitor it and here's where it's the the we we chose Google classroom which okay. was entirely my brain shop no no my assistant coach is a teacher and he came up with it um, they're Very doing cool. it with our school system so it seemed smart everybody's already semi familiar with it yeah. and then we sent them a link on how to get a gmail account if they didn't have it so the Google classroom allowed us to put out the workouts get everyone connected, to have it seem kind of formal. Um, um, and then what we've done is the first couple of weeks, we didn't start out too heavy, even though we gave that schedule. It's been right. more um, participation as our first step and making sure everybody understands how Google works. So I'm not really like, oh, what did you do during the first week? It's just, hey, great to see you on here. Oh, right. okay. Uh, and if they say something that they did, then I'm, I'm um, you know, oh, that's fantastic. And our questions of the day, um, uh, my fellow co coach, he came up with those, and those were great, just things about, you know, who's your favorite player, why. So now this kind of got us making sure everybody's on the forum, getting them engaged, um, and it gives a chance to give them positive feedback. Oh, you know, this is my favorite player because this. Oh, yeah, you're right. He does remind me of you. Y'all both have this quality. Whew. You know, keep working hard and y'all are going to, you know, so, um, yeah, yeah, it really is. It's really at the beginning. I do not want them thinking like um, I'm checking. What are you doing? What are you working out? Are you working right. out? What are you? Are you so it's just, hey, um, so lots of positive feedback. Actually, today now, because this is the end of week two, we're going to have a Zoom team meeting with everyone. And right. a couple of people haven't really been participating but they're going to be on this zoom meeting so then that i think will get them now a chance to be yep. there post uh the next things that we've done is postseason reflection player evaluation and after this zoom meeting and feeling like you know everyone's um talking and we've got uh it's it's not so uh they understand that this is a way that we can connect now we're going to start asking them on week three, okay, which workout did you do? Okay. You know, but the point of that is going to be now so that I can actually um, give them help and personalize it toward them. You know, okay. it's, it's, I don't plan on if they, like I said, if they couldn't do something, it's trying to just stay connected and, and get them, um, you know, get them doing something. And, and if I can connect with them, then I can get them even working on, what they need to work on soccer wise so just i just threw this in just so that you know we will right now we're just doing low uh, the program just includes soft landings and supports which are things like ladders you know hopscotch different ways of of of, of landing but um you can see and and this is maybe something we can do on a sports performance um yep. uh webinar Go a little bit more into to the plyometrics and, and actual progressions. Yes. Uh, the reflection part. This is kind of key. I would recommend coaches do this. I do this whether or not I'm in a coronavirus situation, especially <laughs> with high school. Um, yeah. Is is get a postseason reflection. Um, and so these are the questions that we have our players answering. 
um, getting them to analyze their game and, and, and say how they think they did, et cetera, their weaknesses, team weaknesses, et cetera. But they have to do this. They have to do this first. And okay. after they do this, because I, um, after they do this, they'll get this. Wow. I'm going to fill this out for them. Um, but part of the thing is I've had it in the past where, you know, these are kids and sometimes you fill out something that you realize they think they're great in. And, and right. like, I, I, I don't want to hurt feelings. Like, I'm going to be honest with them, but I do want to know what they think first. So that's where that reflection helps because it helps me give them the news in a way that's more effective. Yeah, you know? well, no, it's just the art of listening. It's just being a good coach. Right. Great. It's great. Right. Folks have to listen first. So. All right. All right. So, um, you know, and we were really careful with how we made this evaluation here, um, you know, because we want I know when I was a kid, I'll confess, I was a kid that I looked at the evaluation like a report card, you know, and if yeah. it said that I wasn't like great at something, I was really disappointed. And so versus, OK. So we really are, you know, the fixed mindset, growth mindset, including that. And again, that's part of why I want to know what they're thinking first so that I can present feedback. But with their reflection and now this coach um, guidance, now when I'm checking on them and checking on them for, um, you know, what did you do? If, if, if it's something that, you know, let's say they're going on long runs every day, you know, or something right. is like, Oh, well, you know, we said that, wow, you, you're, you know, like you were good at speed and or your endurance was a strength of yours. Like maybe you should, you know, so that that's where yeah. now we can help yeah. hold them accountable and have them take ownership for it too. We've gone ahead and started adding kind of like a, another thing I noticed was I would like posted a couple of photos. You see me on the left. I have yep. a couple of my kids that took to that beauty perfectly. Like, you know, they go and they do it and now they started posting their pictures and now other people are becoming a little bit more interested. So oh, that's um, fantastic. Yeah. Any, anything, get them engaged and get them doing. That's fantastic. So wonderful. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, I, I just it just really tickled me too to see the a couple of the kids following it so perfectly. I was like, um, by the way, the view that, that that one young man has off his balcony is pretty pretty lovely. The, oh, the, you think? Oh, I oh, told you. I was like, oh my. I was, that's the first thing I thought too. I was like, wow. Yeah, he's down in, in the keys. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's down in the keys. Oh, it must be nice. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a good little man. He's our team captain. Okay. Um, so yeah. So again, like I said, I, I actually did a video for. Um, I don't know if you can show the video here. I can't click on it. Yeah. But this, oh, but this is a, a video, this one here of, I did a side to side 20 seconds. I gave them the, the, um, uh, sets reps, you know, three, two markers. I just ended up posting it and sure enough, uh, one of the players went and did it perfectly. Um, ah. so I plan to do more. In fact, when I expand the strength part, I really like what the U.S. Soccer Foundation is doing because yeah. they're actually taking 15 minutes to walk a player through the whole session. So I'm yeah. not just giving them five minutes of telling it and then expecting them to go do it. So that's yeah. the plan um, for the next strength stuff to do some single leg, uh, single leg balancing, um, you know, single leg RDLs, basically a bunch of exercises that are going to give them a uh yeah. some better proprioception and 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 they're going to notice the control um yeah i believe that's about it this was us before everything hit we like to at the beginning of practice uh all yeah. get there early and because people show up at different times so right. we just have out a ton of different equipment and they kind of do what they want that's, until we're ready to start practice that's brilliant that's beautiful that's yeah that's i really yeah, no. we're, we're lucky to have the equipment, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like you said, though, people can um, adapt, right? You can adapt, right. bring other things, and you know, we had Fritz Edel on. I think I shared with you yesterday. You know, talking about things that you could use alternatively. I plan um, to use some of his stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's really good. But um, a couple things. Uh, 
Uh, it's been asked, uh, SAQ, speed, agility, quickness, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And um, someone asked, uh, where are the videos on YouTube that you referenced? Um, the video, uh, the YouTube from my speed, agility, quickness. Yes. Um, if you want to get that person's um, email, I'm happy to send them the links because okay. they, they were just ones that I chose. And in fact, I had a whole bunch of links, but I only gave them two for this first um, okay. for this first three weeks. So now for the weeks three to six, I'm going to add about two workouts per category. Very so, good. No. Um, a couple of things struck me. Mm -hmm. Number one, just how you're having them report, right, as opposed to telling them do this, right? right. So, they, so now it's intrinsic. Right now it's it's more, you know, self, uh, self-determination type stuff. And, and uh, yeah, that's fantastic. And just, just how you phrase, like, how you listen to them, right? And as opposed to telling them and telling, talking to them and at them, if you will. So right. that was two things are really, and not only that, but just the quality of the presentation was fantastic. So um, thank you of the presentation. Uh, Stacy is part of our sports performance diploma team. Um, and uh, we do hope to have uh, the one that we scheduled in Houston rescheduled. Yeah. Um, I did ask Stacy on a poll while you were talking how many would like to see more of this type of stuff? And it was pretty overwhelming. You know, uh, I think it was 92% said, yep, let's keep this stuff going. Uh, but again, so I think there there's a need and uh, there, there's an audience. And by the way, the compliments flowing in was incredible. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. And boss, do you want to end it? Thank Stacy, I love you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Everything was fantastic. So. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank, so, you. I'm happy to thank you to the audience. Uh, thank you to the audience. Thank you to Stacy. I love the idea that the kids have to give their reflection before you give them. Your... Mm -hmm. It's key. Yeah. 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 Uh oh, the boss man froze. Uh -uh. Um, so, but that's all right. So, uh, Stacy, we've taken up too much of your time, but again, thank you so much. Uh, happy Easter. Happy and, Easter. Uh, yep. And for those that are brave enough to come back on at four o'clock, It'll be Ian Mulliner, Ian Barker, and myself. We'll talk mostly things, maybe not soccer, but we'll throw some soccer in there too. So it'll be a fun, it's for fun, fun Friday. So happy Easter, everybody. Thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you. And you uh, great God, Friday. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.